In many countries, communal grazing land and farmland are burnt each dry season. This is done to encourage new grass growth for grazing and to clear crop residues from fields. Wildfires also regularly occur in hot, dry environments through lightning strike, accidental escape from cooking fires or cigarette butts, and deliberate lighting. Many people believe that fire is good for the land and that the grass that grows after burning is better for livestock, but this is not the case. When land is burnt, the plants that are easily digestible to livestock tend to be destroyed and only less digestible fire-tolerant plant species remain. In the past, when I wanted to prepare my farmland, we would clear the whole area from grasses and trees. I used to think it was the best way, but we'd only get small yield in the first year. Accidental or planned, fire is very bad for the environment. It damages and kills trees. The soil loses its capacity to hold water, so it is harder to plough and more prone to wind erosion. We have stopped the slash and burn practice on our farm. Anytime I plant crops, even if there's a fear that there is no rain, there is still moisture in the soil and we get results. For natural regeneration to be successful, action must be taken to prevent and manage fire. One community in Ghana has switched from being perpetrators and victims of fire to actively preventing and stopping fires when they do occur. The first stage in this transformation involved gaining the active support of traditional and local government leaders. The beginning of every year we sit down and we program that this year we want to take, introduce FMNR to a number of communities. We invite a community meeting which will include the, the chief of the community, the local government representative, the landowner, the women's leader and the youth leader and the entire community to a big meeting where we will discuss with them about the prospects of the FMNR. Fire prevention to be successful, communities must be aware of the common causes of fire and realise that they have the power to prevent and manage them. Then they can draw up a fire plan that includes measures such as establishing local bylaws against unnecessary burning, introduction of a fine system for infringements enforced by local governments, clearing fire breaks, educating children about the dangers of fire and reducing dry grass to prevent the buildup of fire fuel. In Ghana, young community members were equipped and trained by government firefighters to form a volunteer fire brigade. From 2008 to date, we have trained a total of 415 fire volunteers. Uh, with the communities, we trained six, uh, six communities. The training provided them with the basic fundamentals of fire chemistry. And with that, it makes them confident enough so that in case of any fire, they can also control it. The volunteer firefighters have become an active voice for fire prevention in their community. With support from local authorities, they have contributed to a major reduction in fires. We are well prepared. Taking the training and the knowledge we have acquired from the FMNR fire volunteers, we are fully prepared to fight any fires in the community. To protect areas from fire, communities can work together to create fire breaks. A fire break is a gap in vegetation that acts as a barrier to slow or stop the progress of a bushfire or wildfire. The grass cuttings can become a fire hazard when dry, so remember to clear all the grass cuttings from the fire break. Let's recap. Planned and accidental fires destroy natural regeneration efforts. When communities are aware of the negative impacts of fire, they'll be motivated to prevent and manage it. The success of fire prevention depends on the support of local authorities. Training and equipping volunteer fire brigades is an effective way to promote fire prevention and control.